This is Texans TV. This week on Texans 360, a one-on-one -on -one with number 99, plus what makes Laramie Tunsil so effective? It's all coming up on Texans 360. We are ready to rock in Houston. Rock and roll, touchdown Texans. Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing great. I'm Drew Doherty, I'm your host, and this is Texans 360. Hope your Independence Day is going swimmingly if you're watching this on July 4th. And we've got a big show for you because we're gonna rewind and go back to 2011 in a magic carpet ride game featuring TJ Yates and the Houston Texans. Plus, we're gonna take some graduation photos from a little bit earlier in the summer. And we're gonna look and how Laramie Tunsil gets the job done at left tackle. But we start things off defensively. Texans gonna have a new coordinator on that side of the ball in 2020 in Anthony Weaver, and he has much to say and much to discuss about the state of the Texans defense and what's to come. Houston Texans defensive coordinator, Anthony Weaver, and former Texans player, Anthony Weaver. Well, coach, how's it going? Good to see you. Oh, things are things are great. Things are great, Mark. I mean, you know, in this environment, just, uh, it, you realize how much you, you take for granted, um, mm -hmm. but it's well, been awesome to, to get this this time with the family. And I just pray for all those who are being affected by by COVID right now. I mean, you guys work so much as a staff and this time of year, I know it's always hot and heavy in the building with OTAs and everything. What is it like being home, family and getting all this work done as a coach at the same time? Uh, it's been unique. It's been unique. Uh, never have I had to, you know, I've never been in meetings and had my two-year-old son run up to me and, and try and try to play with my uh, my controller. But uh, we're you know we're still we're still working. You know, we're working with all the technology we have available to us. We're still making progress and moving in the right direction. And I think as as long as you're doing that, then then everything will be okay. What do you think is different that you bring to the table as defensive coordinator, just in general? What do you think it is, coach? Me personally, like I, I'm going to be myself. You know, I, I'm going I'm to have a calm demeanor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a rational thinker and logical thinker in, in times of high stress situations. But I have the utmost faith in our in our players and in the staff. You know, I'm very fortunate to still have, you know, Romeo Cornell on staff, who obviously has been a huge mentor for me, uh, has a tremendous amount of wisdom and knowledge and, and has and it's not not afraid to share it. And then all the players we got. We got some really good players who I, I can't wait to just get a hold of and put them in some of these these new schemes that we're we're devising up. Will this season's defense be more aggressive? Hmm. I said this, you know, previously, that I envision our defense being a reflection of our city. Mm -hmm. So I want a defense that's going to go out there and be extremely passionate about ball. They got to be tough. They got to be Texans tough, and they got to be resilient. They got to be able to respond in the face of and be successful in the face of any adverse situation. And I, I think we have the guys on the roster to, to get that done. It's got to be an interesting dynamic when you're a player. You're fully responsible for yourself, part of a team. Now you're responsible for so many guys. What do you perceive as the difference, really? Um, I mean, Mark, it's no different than, than being single and then getting married and having kids, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you just feel the pressure of not wanting to let anybody down. And, and that's probably that's probably the biggest thing. When you're by yourself, you control all of that. So you control how hard you work and how disciplined you are. Now you're trying to motivate and bring people along with you. While you feel that pressure, it's always something I've embraced. I've always saw myself as a leader, even as a player. So this isn't a this isn't a position or or anything that feels unusual. It's actually something I embrace. Well, coach, I think I speak on behalf of all the season ticket members when I say I am ready to run through a brick wall right now for you. So great job today, and uh, it's been great listening to you and watching you, and we're looking forward to watching the team play come August. Thanks a lot for being with us today. Appreciate you having me on. It's going to be fun to see what he does differently over the years past. He's got a lot of Rex Ryan in his DNA coaching-wise, plus quite a bit of Romeo Cornell, too. So going to be fun to see that union of two great minds with Weavers as well. Now, the tip of the spear for the Texans' defense over the last decade has been J.J. Watt, and that will remain the case in 2020. J.J. went one-on-one -on -one with the voice of the Houston Texans' Mark Vandermeer. J.J. Watt and J.J. 
We've seen a bunch of you this off season, wedding picks, Wisconsin weather reports, your TV show, how's it going? It's going well, you know, I mean, obviously it's an unfortunate situation that we're all in right now, um, but I'm very fortunate and thankful to be in a situation where I got to spend time with my wife and my brothers and uh, work out through it all. So I consider myself lucky. How has the defense stayed connected virtually in the off season? We know you're on the Zoom calls. How's that been for you, Jason? It's actually been going really well. You know, I was slightly skeptical about it to start because I didn't know how much, you know, people talking over each other, trying to get the information across, but it's actually been very effective, um, especially in our D-line group. We have great communication. Weave does a great job getting the information across. It's been a lot of fun, actually, because we, we get to see each other and we haven't gotten to see each other for so long now. We're trying to figure out with the guidelines and with the rules, if there's a way we can get together in small groups to do walkthroughs just to get through our plays, because that helps a lot. But at the current moment, the Zoom meetings are what we have, and we're going to continue with them. They've been good. What career accomplishment are you most proud of in the NFL? That might be a tough one, but what are your thoughts on that? I mean, in terms of career accomplishment in the NFL, I think it would, it would have to be the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award over anything else. I mean, just because of what it means and what it stands for in terms of on the field, off the field, and, and all the people who helped me earn that and get that and the people who built me to this point. So I think in terms of that, that's what I would say. In terms of on the field, the first playoff game, win for the Houston Texans in history will always be a special one for me. It'll always be a special moment, a special memory. But I really, really, really look forward to creating new memories much better than that. In the first playoff win and the latest playoff win, you had big moments in each of those games. And I got to think that in the latest playoff win with that big sack you had that turned the momentum in the game, it's different than your rookie year when you had the pick six. It's got to feel different because you have all that experience under your belt. Yeah, but this year's was special because it was coming back off the injury. I don't think anybody really knew what to expect. I had an idea of what to expect, but didn't fully know. And just to be able to come back, have that impact in a playoff game, that meant a lot to me. And just to be able to help us win. I mean, that's everything that I do is to help the team win. In that instance, it did. And I'm very thankful for that. Your rookie year, I did a show with Connor Barwin and Sean Cody, and they talked about rookie J.J. Watt and that you had a life plan. And they were very impressed with you. They were kind of semi-teasing, but they were impressed. So did you have a life plan? And and how's the plan working out versus, you know, your expectations of the plan? Oh, I mean, I think that I, I certainly had goals, that's for sure. I mean, I, I always have goals. I write down my goals, things I want to accomplish. Uh, rookie, shoot, back in 2011, I mean, if you looked at my five-year plan, the number one goal for me was to win a Super Bowl and bring a Super Bowl to Houston. So that's the one I'm still working on. I'm still, that is my number one goal i want to accomplish that for this city for these people for our team for our fan but in terms of where i'm at in life i'm fortunate enough to be married i mean i have an incredible home here in houston i have a television show on tv i mean i got to host saturday night live i mean the things i've gotten to accomplish the people i've gotten to meet the experience i've gotten to have i couldn't be more thankful for where i am so i would say that whatever my plan was there's only one thing missing from it now and that's my goal all right, well, rooting for that Super Bowl. JJ, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you, I appreciate it. Have a good one. Coming up, why is Laramie Tunsil so good at blocking? We'll explore this on Texans 360. How much of Deshaun have you seen play now that he's gotten into the NFL? And what do you see in his game that you might wish you could have had in yours? <laughs> Well, I am a Deshaun Watson fan. I just love the way he carries himself. He's a leader out there on the field. Uh, he battles, you know, he plays through injuries. Um, so, you know, he's the type of guy I, I really appreciate that's, that's playing the game right now. Um, I, I wasn't near the athlete he was as far as speed goes and things. I, I think we both kind of created and, and made plays, you know, and sometimes uh, when things break down, you gotta, you gotta improvise a little bit. He does a great job of that finding guys down the field, keeping his eyes down the field, and then when he needs to, he can take off and go get those yards, which I never could have done. So <laughs> I appreciate that part from him. This is Texans 360. That was Ty Detmer, the 1990 Heisman Trophy winner from BYU. So he knows a thing or two about good quarterbacking. He spent about a decade in the NFL, and he's high on Deshaun Watson. You know, Deshaun Watson is a pretty big fan of Laramie Tunsil's as well. The left tackle and the quarterback been working out together all offseason long. And what makes Tunsil so effective? Well, our John Harris 
explains here in this week's version of the Telestrator. Welcome to Texas Telestrator presented by BMW. I am John Harris and I used to coach high school football in Jacksonville, Florida. I've told that many times. And I bring that up because Lake City, Florida is about an hour and 15 minutes down the road. It was at Columbia High School where I first found out about that man right there, number 78, Laramie Tunsil, re-signed with the Texans, will be here for the next four years, and I cannot tell you how excited I am. I've been following this big fella for a long time. I think he's probably the best offensive lineman I've ever seen at each level. Maybe Orlando Pace at the college level, but they were different players. When I watch Laramie Tunsil out on the edge, I feel like I'm watching what a left tackle should look like. Smooth, moves fluidly, long arms, can withstand some bull rush, great feet. I mean, all those things you see with Laramie. And I found this play. This ended up being a touchdown that Deshaun would throw down the left sideline. But when I saw the end zone view of this play, I realize what the Texans are going to have for the next four years because you get it from Laramie, you got Titus Howard, Nick signed an extension, Max is on his rookie contract. You're going to have these guys around for a while. You got Zach Fulton back. We're going to focus on Laramie because if you're a young offensive lineman and you want to grow and get better, you want to look at the feet. Now, not everybody out there that's 300 pounds is going to be blessed with feet like Laramie Tunsil. But that's where it starts with him. And you can see how easily he moves on this arc right here. He shuffles, doesn't cross his feet. He just shuffles like he's playing basketball defense. I mean, you think about when you learned defense playing basketball a long time ago, you coach you get mad, you make you do defensive shuffle. That was so hard. Laramie just makes this look so simple. And this is Justin Houston, y'all. And he is a tremendous pass rusher, and he's just bringing speed. And watch Laramie just cut him off. He's going to get a little bit of a bull rush, and he just anchors against it. Houston's like, I've got, I can't get an edge. Edge rushers want to get the edge of you. They want to rush half of a guy. They want to go right down your middle. They want to get on the edge. Well, Laramie doesn't allow him to do that. He squares up on him. Now Houston's like, well, the only thing I've got is a bull rush. And watch Laramie sink his butt a little bit more. Okay, feet are in great position, and now he's just going to sink it a little bit more and then lock him up. And then look at that pocket. Man, that pocket's beautiful. I could watch Larry Tunsil pass protect, play left tackle all day long. Look at how smooth he moves on the arc. The feet are never out of control, and he just locks it up. I would love to tell you that that's easy. It's probably easy for Laramie. It is not easy. Not easy at all. Now, we were fortunate years back watching Dwayne Brown do things like that, but I don't even think Dwayne moves the way that Laramie can. Laramie Tunsil protecting the left side of this line is going to be a godsend. He is a tremendous football player. His pass protection is on point and pristine, and it allows Deshaun Watson to throw the ball. Look at this pocket. Look at this pocket. I mean, these three are handling these two up front, which should be easy. Three should handle two. But look at this pocket. That was not a pocket that we had in 2017 and 2018 regularly. We have it regularly in 2019 and beyond because that all-pro tackle right there, Laramie Tunsil, will be manning that side for the next four years. Say cheese. After the break, we're taking some graduation photos. That's next on Texans 360. Today we're celebrating the completion of a new mortgage-free home for our Sergeant First Class Justin Ruber. He served in the United States Army in Iraq, two tours of duty. Today we're giving him a home in honor of his service and sacrifice to our nation. I appreciate it. Your, you're in trouble room. 
There's no word that I can express that will tell what this means to me and, and my family. Uh, you know, to have a house that's mortgage free is is what everybody dreams about, and I can't I can't say anymore. It's hard for me to put that into words. Especially appreciate you know, everything that went into it, all the hard work from all the organizations and Houston Texans, especially um, during these times of the COVID-19, where people are out here, you know, essential workers still working and putting that herself on the line just to build a house for me and my family. That's greatly appreciated. That's a great story. And on a personal level, I get to take part in a very tiny portion of that story every year at a game in November, December, when we actually give the home away and announce it in front of the crowd. It's always the most nervous I get because I don't want to mess it up because this family is getting a new home. But congrats to them. Best wishes. And uh, we can't wait to see the memories that are made there. All right, moving along, there's some memories that were made in late May at a graduation. Lots of kiddos moving on to the next level, and the Houston Texans were taking part with some Houston Texans YMCA students taking their photos. So we're here today at the Houston Texans Y with some of our graduating seniors. They were surprised with portraits with the Houston Texans organization. A lot of them didn't have the opportunity to take senior pictures this year for the fact that they can now come with their parents, take pictures at a place that means a lot to them, the YMCA, that they have a lot of memories at, just makes it that much more special. They were also surprised to receive Microsoft services from Chevron, and so this is a really cool and fun day for them. Thank you guys! Microsoft Surface 2.0. Oh. <laughs> Yay! I was given the opportunity to successfully close uh, this chapter in my life and I can move on to, as a, co a college freshman um, confidently, happily. Uh, I'm so thankful. Like, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is great. And I love getting my pictures taken. <laughs> Thank you, Houston Texans and Chevron. We're looking back at one of the greatest games in Texans history with TJ Yates. It's all next on Texans 360. Hey, you're still with us, and we're so happy that you are. This is Texans 360, I'm Drew Doherty. And back in December of 2011, TJ Yates and the Houston Texans took a trip to Cincinnati with a chance to clinch their first ever AFC South title. For 58 minutes and 58 seconds, they trailed in that game, but they didn't in the final two seconds. Mark Vandenberg, voice of the Houston Texans, got to re-watch that contest with TJ Yates, and here's some of the highlights. TJ, great to have you with us. And today we're going to re-watch the December 11th showdown, Texans at the Bengals, to clinch the AFC South for the first time. You're going to be fired up to see this one. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Haven't, uh, haven't revisited this in a while, so it's going to be good to go back and uh, watch the game and uh, relive some good old memories. I remember I was pretty nervous about this game, not going to lie. Completely overshot Kevin Walter there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first half, things were a little shaky. It really got rolling in the second half of the Texans, but we'll get there pretty quick here. As we... Yeah, this is a this is a total team win right here, man. This was super memorable. Oh, Ooh. I remember that one. Yeah, Joe, almost went the other way. Yards. Woo! Um, yeah, he could basically do it all here. Oh, check out that pass. What a beauty that one. <laughs> and I kind of started making my what? way towards this certain part of the sideline away from Coach Kubiak because I knew he was about to just rip me. And he starts to meet me right in the middle. And he laid it on pretty thick. Um, you know, told me what I needed to hear. But then the one thing he said to me right at the end of that is like, you better get your butt ready because we're coming out throwing the ball right after this. Because I remember this situation very well. Like I said, it felt like maybe it wasn't going to be the day of the Texans to get this done. And then Boom. watch. It is. That was the spark that got us back going. Connor with that sack fumble. Brooks picking it up. 
Hit him on a little slip under route. Wide open, easiest touchdown pass of my career right there. <laughs> Those guys up front. Bryzel, I think, broke a leg in this game. That, that is the one thing that nobody really knows. He broke his leg in like the first quarter. He comes in the halftime, his leg is crazy swollen. And he was like, tape it up. I don't care, tape it up. And he played the entire game with a broken leg. You said we didn't have any design runs. This was, oh. one. This was one of them. <laughs> Worked out well for us. I cut back inside and saw some defense and I immediately dove to the ground. Yeah, got to get a field goal to set up that final touchdown drive. And whoa, was he down? I think he was, they called it an incomplete pass. So, okay, all right. No, we got the ball back. That's what it was. Oh. There's the senior hockey league. Sun's out, but no guns out because it's 34 degrees. <laughs> you can still see the biceps underneath there. Yep. Oh, yeah. So it was a complete pass and a fumble. Oh, yep. So yeah. first and 10 deep. And fall play action packs out of, out of our own end zone there. Okay. Third and 15. Got to have it. Got to have it. Exactly. Our little shovel pass again. Oh. oh. Look at that. No way. Oh. Great spot. 80 yards away, and here it is, the drive. Here's a huge play. Oh, man. Somehow, Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Just about half the speed here on this one, though. How confident are you in the call here? That oh, was great. I saw this D-line jump out right there. Oh, man, great. Unbelievable. We, we had practiced that play so much, and I knew exactly where to go with the ball. and. Man, talk about a great time right there. Those guys jumping all over each other. And that's what you play the game for. Well, TJ, thanks so much for revisiting this, reliving it with us. Great memories and best of luck getting the team ready for 2020. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks so much. This was a great time. Ah, the memories. Good stuff there. And hey, if you like what you've seen on the show here on Texans 360, you got this and a whole lot more on the Houston Texans mobile app as well as HoustonTexans.com. Even get your phone out and scan that QR code and you'll just be bombarded with good content. All right, for the guys that put this show together like Tyler Marcotte, Nicholas Patterson, Tyler Sutter, Jay McDevitt, and so on and so on, I'm Drew Doherty. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching and go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.